we will study the events taking place in the formation of neural tube in the frog embryo. This process is called as neurulation. So, it is the formation of neural tube. What is neural tube? Neural tube is that tissue which will form the nervous system of the uh, organism. So, that is called as neural tube formation. So, the first question is where is the neural tube formed from? So, this is the final gastrula appearing in cross section where you can see an outer layer which is made up of the uh, epidermal ectoderm and the neuro ectoderm and an inner layer which consists of the notochord, the mesodermal tissues and endoderm and uh, you, there is a central cavity that is the archendron. Look at this area which is called as the neuro ectoderm. So, this neuro ectoderm it is lying on the mid dorsal side of the embryo. So, the neuro ectoderm lies on the mid dorsal side of the embryo whereas all the other regions on the surface of the embryo is occupied by the epidermal ectoderm. So, the neuro ectoderm, neuro ectoderm is seen on the mid dorsal side of the embryo. It is from the neuro ectoderm that the neural tube forms. So, this process is called as neurulation and what are the events associated with neurulation? So, the first event is the formation of a neural plate or medullary plate. Where is this neural plate formed from? It is formed from the neural ectoderm. So, it is this neural ectoderm that gives rise to the neural plate. So, we will go to the events. So, we look at this diagram where only the uh, dorsal portion of the embryo with the neural ectoderm is shown. So, it is this neural plate uh, which, which lies on the mid dorsal side of the embryo that thickens, it will undergo thickening to form a plate like structure called as the neural plate. It is also called as the medullary plate. So, where does it extend from? It extends from the dorsal blastoporal lip to the anterior extremity. So, for that we will go back to the gastrula. So, here you can see the uh, gastrula in section where this is the mid dorsal line. So, this is the mid dorsal line, this is the blastopore, this is the dorsal lip of the blastopore. So, through the dorsal lip of the blastopore, the notochordal material has involuted inwards, whereas the neural ectoderm is lying on the outer layer. Neural ectoderm is a part of the outer layer, but the, uh, me, uh, the notochordal material has moved inside through involution. So, this is the neural ectoderm and this neural ectoderm, it will thicken to form the neural plate. So, where does it extend from? So, this is the blastopore it is through the blastopore, it is through the dorsal lip of the blastopore that the meso, uh, the uh, notochord has involuted in. From this part onwards, it is the neural ectoderm. So, we can say the neural ectoderm extends from the dorsal blastoporal lip to the anterior region of the embryo. So, this much shaded portion is the neural plate. So, it extends from the dorsal blastoporal lip to the anterior extremity of the embryo. So, this is a posterior part of the embryo and this is the anterior part of the embryo. So, it extends from the dorsal blastoporal lip to the anterior extremity. Now, we will come back to the neural plate. So, it is this neural ectoderm that will thicken to form the neural plate which extends from the dorsal lip of the blastopore to the anterior extremity. So, this is a section. Now, what happens? The lateral margins of this neural plate these are the lateral, this is one lateral margin, this is the other lateral margin. The lateral margins of the neural plate become elevated, so they are elevated to form fold like structures. These folds are called as neural folds, so you can see they are elevated to form the neural folds. So, the lateral edges of the medullary plate will become elevated to form a fold like structure which is called as the neural fold or the medullary fold. Now, what happens? These, uh, so 
uh, when the neural plate uh, when neural falls uh, they get elevated a groove is formed here a, on the neural plate a groove will be formed which will gradually deepen this groove is called as the neural groove so this is the neural groove or a depression which is appearing in the center of the neural plate so this is called as the neural groove now so this is a sectional view but when we look at the dorsal view of the embryo we will just have a look at the dorsal view of the embryo where this is the blastopore the mid dorsal line consists of this new rectoderm which will thicken to form the neural plate so this is the neural plate so remember this is the dorsal view of the embryo this is the blastopore with its dorsal lip and this is the mid dorsal line of the embryo where the neural plate has formed okay so uh, this neural plate the edges of the neural plate they have folded up to form the neural fold so th these are the neural folds so this is the neural fold as a result a groove appears in the center it is called as the neural groove now the anterior end of the neural groove will also Uh, assume uh, it will develop a transverse fold which is called as the transverse neural fold we will just leave it now now the cells of this neural plate the cells of the neural plate will now become elongated columnar and stratified so the neural plate cells become elongated columnar and stratified it is a kind of rearrangement by which the lateral neural folds they start growing towards each other so here this was the neural fold and this was the neural fold on this side but now what happens because of the uh, elongation and uh, uh, elongation of the cells of the neural plate the folds start growing towards each other the neural folds they start growing towards each other so this is a sectional view where you can see the neural folds are growing towards each other now what happens in the third view what you can see the neural folds are fused so here in this view the neural folds are fused there is fusion of the neural folds which will form a tube so this has formed a tube in the center and the midline and this tube is called as the neural tube so this is this has formed a tube the neural plate has now developed into the form of a tube and this tube is called as the neural tube which encloses a cavity called as the neuro seal and so this is by the fusion of the neural folds so here you can see the fused neural folds and since it is a dorsal view you cannot see the neural tube but here in this view you can see the neural tube because this is a section now now coming to the fusion the fusion of the neural folds they begin just in front of the mid region so they begin just in front of the mid region and they progress both anteriorly and posteriorly so they begin the fusion begins here the fusion of the neural folds begins here and then it the fusion progresses anteriorly as well as posteriorly finally to assume such a structure that means it is completely fused on all sides now at the anterior end so here this is the anterior end at the anterior uh, at the uh, anterior end the neural tube will remain open so here at this region this is the anterior end even though the folds meet each other there will be an opening left here it is called as the neuropore this is the neuropore at the posterior region there is already the blastopore so at the uh, posterior region there will be the blastopore and at the anterior region there will be the neuropore at the posterior end the neural folds they merge to the sides of the blastopore so what happens when the folds so here is the blastopore so this is the neural fold and this is the neural fold so when they grow towards each other what happens is that the blastopore will be cut off from the exterior so far the blastopore was the opening that opened out from the archendron but now because of the growing of the neural folds towards each other the blastopore is covered and it is cut off from the exterior now it will remain so where is this blastopore opening into the archendron as we saw in gastrulation 
Here a tube has now developed. So this tube is connected to the arc enron through this blastopore. So it is forming a canal. Now this blastopore is actually forming a canal connecting the tube which is formed here and the arc enron which is already inside. And that canal is called as the neuroenteric canal. So uh, inside, inside this is the arc enron. The blastopore leads to the arc enron. Above this there is another tube formed which is the neural tube. So the neural tube is connected to the arc enron through this closed blastopore which will remain as a temporary passage which is called as the neurendric canal. Now as the neural falls they fuse. The neuroseal becomes constricted off from the neural ectoderm. So you can see the falls are meeting each other. And this is the neuroseal. The neuroseal is now constricted off from the dorsal ectoderm. So this was a part of ectoderm. This is ectoderm. This is also ectoderm. This was neuroectoderm. So when this comes down and forms a tube, this tube is now separated from the dorsal ectoderm. So this, this is the tube and this is the dorsal ectoderm. So now it has got separated because the lateral epidermal ectoderm, it will grow over the neural tube and they will fuse at the mid, uh, mid dorsal line. This is the, this is a part of epidermal ectoderm whereas this is neural ectoderm, this is epidermal ectoderm, this is also epidermal ectoderm. The neural plate is that one which has now become the neural tube by uh, formation of neural faults and their fusion. Now what happens these two, this epidermal ectoderm the, as well as this epidermal ectoderm, they grow towards each other. The lateral epidermal ectoderm will grow towards each other. They will grow towards the neural over the neural tube and they fuse at the mid dorsal line. So the neural tube is cut off from the uh, dorsal epidermal ectoderm. So this is how the neural tube is formed. And uh, this cavity called as the neuroseal, it is broader in the anterior region of the neural tube whereas it is narrower at the posterior part. So when you take a section through here, you can see the neuroseal is broader here but narrower here. At this stage, the embryo is called as the neurula. So this is the neurula. Now we will come to a tissue which is called as the neural crest. What is meant by neural crest? At the time of neurulation, a group of cells on either side of the neural plate. So this is here, this group of cells as well as this group of cells because this entire layer is formed of many cells and cells occupy this area form the neural plate. Cells here will form the uh, epidermal ectoderm and these cells, these cells or the group of cells which are seen on either side of the neural plate which are shaded here in black. They are not incorporated in the neural tube. You can see they are not, this is the neural tube. They do not form part of the neural tube. Neither do they form part of this ectoderm, the epidermal ectoderm. But the, when the neural tube separates from the epidermal ectoderm, these cells occupy the space between the epidermis and the neural tube. This crest of cells is called as the neural crest. So once again, the neural crest is actually formed from a group of cells which are seen on either side of the neural plate. When the neural tube forms, these cells do not form part of the neural tube. When the neural tube separates from this epidermal ectoderm that grows over it, the neural crest cells occupy the space between the epidermis as well as the neural tube. This forms the neural crest. So what is the significance of the neural crest? The neural crest cells, they start moving laterally as well as to the ventral side which you cannot see in this diagram since this is a section. So they will uh, move laterally as well as towards the ventral side uh, and they stream off to different directions and they stream to different tissues and develop into. So the neural crest cells give rise to certain tissues of the nervous system such as the uh, spinal ganglia. There is a uh, ganglion present on the root of the spinal cord which is called as the dorsal root ganglion of the spinal cord. They will give rise to the ganglia of the sympathetic nervous system. 
they will give rise to the ganglia connected to the cranial nerves they also give rise to the pigment cells of the skin peritoneum that means the inner lining of the body cavity they also form the pigment cells of blood vessel walls etc uh, these cells also contribute to the form of visceral skeleton and they also contribute to the formation of cells of adrenal medulla so the neural crest cells they laterally and ventrally move in many directions and give rise to tissues such as the dorsal root ganglion of spinal cord the ganglia of the sympathetic nervous system the ganglia connected to the cranial nerves the pigment cells of the skin peritoneum blood vessels etc the visceral skeleton and the cells of the adrenal medulla now we will go to uh, region which is called as the primary organizer so the development of the neural tube is actually induced by this notochord as well as the mesodermal tissues which lie in the roof of the arc and ron of the late gastrula so this corda mesoderm that means the tissue which comprises of the not future notochord as well as the future mesoderm it is this corda mesoderm that induces the development of the neural tube from the new ectoderm and uh, that is why it is called as the neural inductor the corda mesoderm is called as the neural inductor a study was conducted by the embryologist speeman in 1938 uh, in which study he called this corda mesoderm as the primary organizer which give uh, which induces the formation of the neural tube so this finishes the process which is called as neurulation so where you can see uh, this is the neural plate another diagram which will form the neural groove which will later form the neural tube and above that is the neural crest and above that is the uh, ectoderm the epidermal ectoderm so this finishes the process which is called as neurulation in frog embryo